Welcome back. Please share, subscribe, and comment. Canada. Venom. The last dance title. Venom. The last dance setting. The vibrant streets of Toronto, Canada, under the shimmering glow of the CN Tower, where the urban pulse masks an underlying tension that threatens to erupt. In this bustling city, an unusual phenomenon had gripped its citizens. Reports had emerged about a new form of life, a fabled creature known to the indigenous people as Wazakat, meaning the Dark One. Legends spoke of a shapeshifter that thrived on the chaos of the modern world. Amidst the urban landscape, whispers of elusive viral infections and strange occurrences captured the attention of scientists, thrill-seekers, and those entangled in the underground music scene alike. Chapter 1 the consumed Maya, a passionate biologist at the University of Toronto, had spent years studying infectious diseases. After a series of erratic behavior exhibited by clubgoers, she found herself pulled deeper into a world she had only brushed against. Late-night raves and dark alleys became her laboratories, where she observed people changing, almost morphing into shadows of their former selves. But not just any shadows the wildest, most uninhibited versions of themselves. One evening, she stumbled into a dilapidated warehouse, drawn in by pulsating beats and hazy lights. The crowd was entranced, their movements fluid and chaotic. Yet Maya perceived something more sinister. They were high on the energy, but also something darker, a substance rumored to have been synthesized from a mix of viral components found in the city's sewers. The underground scene had given birth to a drug nicknamed Venom, and with it came whispers of its transformative effects. Chapter 2 The hunter, meanwhile, Alex, an investigative journalist, had been following the trail of these occurrences. Known for his tenacity, he had uncovered a web of stories that transcended mere drugs or nightlife. Rumors framed the substance as a means of connecting with a primal side, an exploration of human nature that intrigued and terrified him. With a curiosity that bordered on obsession, Alex set out to uncover the truths hidden beneath the city's surface. As Maya and Alex's paths collided in memory-laden club corners and dark cafes, they found themselves forging an alliance. They shared a common goal, to uncover the reasons behind the surge in Venom and to reveal the truth before it consumed the liveliness of the city. Chapter 3. The Dance of Shadows, Their Investigation, led them to a clandestine lab hidden beneath a vibrant art gallery, rumored to be the birthplace of Venom. The founder, an enigmatic figure named Dr. Lila Serene, had been researching themes of addiction and transformation. Disillusioned by the state of modern medicine, she sought to explore the depths of human experience through her concoctions. This isn't just a drug, Dr. Serene explained, her sharp eyes glistening with fervor. It's a way to access facets of yourself that society chains you away from. It's chaos in its rawest form, a dance with both light and darkness. While Maya cautioned against its potential dangers, Alex was intrigued. This wasn't just a story. It was a cultural conversation, a manifestation of human desire for connection and liberation. The stakes were heavier than they initially realized. Chapter 4 the road to revelation as the city continued to spiral into chaos. With Venom influencing behaviors and lifestyles, Maya and Alex knew they had to act. They noted the increasing violence and psychological breakdown in their community, a dark reflection of humanity consumed by its own cravings. With the help of underground artists and activists who embodied the spirit of the city, they organized a part rave, part awareness campaign, titled The Last Dance. It was meant to be a celebration of life, creativity, and awareness, while also confronting the perils that came with ensuring the substance didn't consume the essence of the community. As neon lights flickered and the beat reverberated through the walls, Maya and Alex stood at the forefront of the dance. They urged the crowd to embrace their struggles, to express and share their fears without the need for a chemical crutch. In that moment, they recognized that while Venom had fed on the chaos, it was ultimately choice and connection that defined the community. Chapter 5 Aftermath weeks later, as the dust settled and the last echoes of the music faded, Maya and Alex saw a shift within the city, a resurgence of unity and conversation. The raves continued, 
But now, instead of a mindless chase of sensation, they transformed into spaces of art and healing. The tales of Venom endured not as an ominous specter, but as a reminder of the depths humanity could explore, both beautiful and dark. Maya published her findings in a well-respected journal, while Alex crafted a compelling narrative that wound its way through the media landscape, igniting dialogues across the nation. In Canada, a place of rich diversity, they celebrated not just survival, but the intricate dance of community resilience. Venom, as it turned out, was not merely a substance. It was a manifestation of fears, desires, and ultimately, the relentless pursuit of understanding one's identity amidst an evolving world. And as the sun rose over Toronto, a new dance began, a dance of hope, reflection, and a commitment to walk through shadows together, for the last time and many times more. The end.